Let's learn about three very common but also very bad pieces of React advice that you definitely shouldn't follow. And speaking of learning, this video is brought to you by Brilliant. More about them in just a bit. Let's get right into it. Our first piece of bad React advice is to avoid the spread operator. A couple of months ago, an article got published on how this person sped up the React table by thousands of times by just removing the spread operator. And it got picked up by Prime, and I love me some Prime, but he went into some detail about how spread was the stupid operator when it really isn't. And a lot of people got from that that they need to avoid the spread operator at all cost. Quick editor's note, please don't take this as me saying that either Prime or the original author were saying that in all cases the spread operator is bad. Their actual content is way more nuanced than that and definitely worth a watch and a read. In React, we use the spread operator a lot and it's okay to do so. Take this example where we have two input fields and a user object. The user object has a first and last name and the two input fields edit those values. So we have this nice onset user function that takes a field and it takes the incoming value. Now we would like to be able to just set the user object. And then we would call set user with that user object to tell React that that value has changed. Let's try it out. And nothing happens. And the reason is because we're just giving the same object reference back to React to say that we've updated that object. React takes a look at the two object references, the old one and the new one, and says, well, they haven't changed, therefore the underlying data hasn't changed. Because React compares objects and arrays by reference, which is their location and memory, and not by their contents. So what do I have to do? Well, we have to create a new object, set the value on it, and then send that to set user. We'll call that value new user, and we'll set it to an empty object. And then we'll update setting the field, and we'll update setting set user. Let's try it again. Now this actually weirdly works, but the underlying data is actually bad. If we do put in a JSON stringify, we can see that the underlying data only has the last key that we updated. So we can update first. In this case, the only value that we have is first. So what we need to do is make a complete copy of the user object and then just change the one field that we want to update. To do that, we use the spread operator. And now let's see if it works. See, that actually works, and it works correctly, and the underlying data is fine. Now we can also simplify this by setting the field value right after the spread. And this works great, and it's really, really clean. But what if you really want to follow that advice and not use a spread operator? Well, let's ask Copilot for some options. So I'll select this, then go to Copilot, and then ask it to refactor this to not use a spread operator. Now let's use a suggestion. And that's not actually a bad suggestion. Object of the sign is what we used to use before we had the spread operator. In fact, most people consider the spread operator to be syntactic sugar or shorthand for object at a sign. But doing either of these things, either the spread operator or object at a sign, have the same underlying problem that Prime was concerned about, which is allocating memory. In each case, we're creating a new object because you have to create a new object. React doesn't work otherwise. Prime's real issue with the spread operator was in using it inside of tight loops where you allocate a lot of memory and then you don't use all of that allocated memory. A very common example of this is when you use an array reducer in combination with a spread operator. Let's take a list of names. And now let's say that we want to create a name lookup object where each one of these names is a key with the value of true. Let's ask Copilot again to make that happen. Okay, Copilot came up with some pretty decent code. Let's bring that into our code base. And now the only issue is that we're not using name lookup, which is why we're getting those red squigglies. Now this is actually a good implementation of a reduce. What's happening is we allocate the new object once, and now each time through the loop, we add a key with the value true to the same object and return it. And that way we're only creating one object when we do this reduce. Now a lot of functional programmers don't like this code because we're mutating the accumulator as we go through the reduce. They think we should do this pattern instead, where the reducer function returns a new object in each iteration where we spread the entire original contents of the object and then set the new key each time we go through. In this case, we'll be creating four different objects in memory and then only using the last one. And this is where myself and the original article author and Prime all agree that this particular pattern 
is a bad idea because you're essentially just wasting memory. It's not a huge problem on small arrays like this, but on larger arrays it can become a real problem. So when you don't know the size of the array, I strongly suggest you go with the mutation version as opposed to the spread version when it comes to this reduce pattern. Now I actually learned the spread operator late when it came to JavaScript. I've been coding JavaScript a long time, and the spread operator is actually a new addition to the language. So when it comes to Boolean advice like this, like don't use the spread operator, you have to think critically about that and ask yourself, why would they add a language feature that you're never supposed to use? And speaking about thinking critically and learning, the best place to learn new stuff is on this week's sponsor, Brilliant. I'm so proud to be partnering Brilliant because they teach the things that I don't in a way that I really like. Check out all of these courses. They go from the basic math through my favorite statistics and then into the complex stuff like differential equations. Differential equations are the foundation of AI. So if you're looking to add AI to your resume, this is a great place to get started. And then of course there's my favorite section, computer science fundamentals. If you are self-taught like me, or if you went to a boot camp, you might not have gotten a good foundation when it comes to data structures and algorithms. And yeah, while we don't necessarily use those day to day, they do have a tendency to show up in interviews. So that's a very good thing to double down on. And you know how much I talk about JavaScript references on this channel? Well, those are pointers. And pointers are all about memory allocation. And they teach it right here on Brilliant. And they teach it graphically and interactively, which is awesome. So you'll really get to learn it. And you get to understand why all those times your references are messing you up in JavaScript, because you'll have those fundamentals. And of course, Brilliant keeps the learning fun by keeping track of all of our progress. So we know how far we've gotten and we know when we're on a great learning streak. So when you go to brilliant.org slash Jack Carrington, you're going to get the first 30 days for free. You've got literally nothing to lose. And the first 200 of you that show up will get 20% off of your annual Brilliant subscription. Another bad piece of a React advice I hear pretty often is never to use use memo or that use memo somehow hurts the performance of applications. The fact of the matter is that use memo is very valuable in two distinct scenarios. The first is if you are calculating something synchronously that is an expensive calculation. You can use memo to simply store the output of that calculation to make sure that you're not recalculating on every single re-render. The second use is to stabilize an object or an array reference that you might pass to a downstream object or use as a dependency in another hook. This is another case where React's great documentation comes to the rescue. This fantastic note at the top that says that you should only use use memo as a performance optimization if you have a problem, and then two awesome deep dives that go into when and why to use use memo. Let me bring up some example performance code to show you viscerally why use memo is so valuable. So here we have a numbers component that takes an array of numbers, sorts them, takes the top 10, and displays those. And that is hosted within an app that has two pieces of state. It is a count state that we can use simply to force a re-render, and then it has a number state that has 100,000 random numbers in it. But then we have two buttons, one that forces a re-render simply by bumping the count, and then another that replaces the numbers array with a whole new 100,000 random numbers. And then in the click handlers for those, we use flush sync around the state setting so we can do performance metrics to find out just how long it takes to respond to that state setting. So before we try this out, let's see what our numbers component is doing with the numbers array. Well, in this case, on every re-render, it's running the sort and then taking the top 10. So what does this look like performance-wise? Well, if I hit re-render, it takes, mm, on average, 20 milliseconds to re-render the component after a state change. If I update the numbers, it takes about 66 milliseconds to generate the 100,000. And then I can try again, and the re-render is still flat at around 20 milliseconds. But now let's bring in use memo and see if we can avoid doing that sort on every re-render. So I've commented out the original sort. I've used use memo to wrap that sort, and then I put in a console log to tell us when we're doing the sorting. Let's hit save and try it again. Now we see that we sorted once to initialize that use memo. And now as we re-render, we can see that that re-render time is down at about the 10 millisecond range. So literally having the time to re-render these components. This is why use memo is such a valuable tool. 
that we shouldn't ignore based on bad advice because it helps us make really performant components. This is where, again, critical thinking comes in so handy when it comes to reasoning through the advice that we get. One, we can look at the documentation and see that there's nothing in the documentation that says that you absolutely shouldn't use use memo. And two, it stands to reason that they wouldn't add a hook to the API that they didn't want us to use. But if you want something more practical and hands-on, you can do a micro benchmark like this and prove to yourself that use memo is certainly very viable. The third piece of bad advice I've been hearing a lot more just recently, and I don't know where this is coming from, is to only use the updater variant of the state setter. So when you get the array back from use state, you get two values. You get the value, and then you get a state setting function. You can call that state setting function in two ways. You can just give it a new value. We see this a lot, including in examples in the React documentation. Or you can give it a function that takes the old value and you give it a new value. In the case of something like a simple counter, where you click a button and it goes up by one, the on click actually works in either case. If you were to wrap it in a use callback, in the case where you just set the value, you have to make sure that the old value is in the dependency array. If you leave it off, that count value is going to stale at zero. So every time you click it, it's going to start at zero, go to one, and you're only going to go from zero to one, and that's it. In the case of using the updater function, you don't have to have that count in the dependency array because we're just getting the count as an argument to the updater, and then we're just passing back the new updated count. So that onClick is then an evergreen function that never needs to change because its behavior is always relative to the current value. Now again, the React documentation folks have done an awesome job covering this particular issue in detail in a deep dive around is using that updater always preferred. And again, it's pretty common sense. You can use it whichever way you prefer. Again, thinking critically, they didn't add an option to the API to just set a value with the intention for you never to use it. They do say that if you want to be consistent about it and use the same thing everywhere, then you should use that updater function. But that obviously does not mean that you should only ever use that updater function. Now, of course, at a practical level, I do want to dispel a bunch of these bad pieces of advice, but I do want to encourage you to think critically about all of the advice that you get when you're doing your React coding or any type of coding. In general, when it comes to coding, Boolean advice, don't do this ever, only do this, is usually junk advice. So I really encourage you not to just ingest that and follow that directly, even if the person that you're getting it from is somebody that you really respect. In the meantime, I would love to hear from you. What junk advice have you heard in your coding career? Be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. If you like the video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.